asked and what God's going to do and, and uh, some people in Edmonton I told about it and they're excited about it and then yesterday I was talking to my brother in Boyan and, and he said to me uh, I'm doing uh, what is it, 40, 40 or 50 some days of uh, no alcohol and that'll save me 500 bucks. I said, praise the Lord, Carl. <laughs> and then I said, uh, so then I, so he said, how's the church going? So I said, started telling him what we were doing and starting this Sunday. Oh, we had 100 questions. He said, well, can I fast with you too? I said, sure you can. So, so I said, so he said, what's the best thing for me to fast? I said, Carl, he watches hockey day and night. I said, fast a hockey game and pray. <laughs> oh, he said, that'd be hard. I said, I said, yeah, I'm doing something real hard for me too. What are you going to fast? I'm going to fast a day of coffee. <laughs> I said, fasting for food's not hard for me. <laughs> but coffee, now that's hard. <laughs> so, so anyway, it's good. So, yeah, the prayer well, people like talk about it, they get excited about it. And it's just kind of neat to see what God's doing it. And uh, through this all, other people are getting excited about it too, want to join in. It's kind of neat. So the whole purpose, of course, is for us to get closer to God. God wants us to grow up. And the way we grow up as Christians is we get close to Him. So that He can speak to us. So that He can minister to us. And so that we can hear Him. Not just talk to Him, but we can hear Him too. And that's a wonderful thing. So that's a great thing we're getting involved with. Any other things that we should announce? Or if I missed anything, just know, maybe so. I'm also excited about preaching. Boy, you know, I could preach for an hour, I think, this morning, but I better not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we're ever going to get through Proverbs 16. <laughs> All right, praise the Lord. Would you bow with me as we open in prayer? Lord, we bless you and we praise you. We thank you for your anointing, Lord. The anointing of the Holy Ghost that breaks yokes, that binds people together with you, that causes there to be a joy in the house, that causes there to rise up faith and encouragement and hope. Oh, Lord, we thank you. And we ask a mighty outpouring of the anointing of your Holy Spirit upon us so that we can see new things, be encouraged and strengthened in our faith and cause the grace and love of the Holy Spirit to flow in us and through us. And I ask this for each one here this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Pastor, I can do it. Got you a mic, and we got you a job. <laughs> Come on down.
<laughs> oh, wow, you look good, girl. <laughs> You're all playing out at home. Well, you look like you had fun playing. Aloha. Aloha. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He.
the gold that's coming off her is something else. She's been uh, really into the word. And the Lord, and it's been good. Anybody else got anything to report? You know, there's special times when you tell what the Lord's done for you and what, what he's doing in your life or has done in your life. Praise reports. There's all kinds of neat things. Well, I'd like to give thanks to the Lord for my grandchildren. My grandson came on Thursday and he brought some fresh fish and he cooked me lunch. And oh, yes, it was just very, very, he's a special guy. He just is. And Friday evening when I was sitting watching the Gaither Gospel Hour, um, they were playing, or playing all the old, old songs from a way back, you know, like Church in the Wildwood, and, um, oh, just all kinds. And then when Linda Randall sang The God on the Mountain, well, I just, you know, it just brought me to my knees. Yeah, she sure sings that part. Oh, it was powerful. Amen. Anybody else? Well, I had uh, the opportunity to, to read a couple books, but one that was especially interesting was Joel Rosenberg's uh, The Twelfth Diamond. On, uh, it's a book on uh, last days. He's a Jewish uh, Christian. And uh, so it's kind of interesting even to see now what's happening in Egypt. It's going to be interesting to see yeah. what starts to happen there. If Egypt would happen swing away from their support of Israel and, and uh, America, they been kind of, if that goes the other way, it's going to, that's just another side. It's going to be interesting to watch to see what happens. Amen. And another thing that was interesting, I heard, uh, I think George Beverly Shea is 102 now, but he was given uh, a huge recognition at the Grammy Awards. <laughs> He has appeared before more people than anybody else in the recording industry. So he's had quite a, a, a message or quite a, a witness through his life. So that was interesting to have. Well, I would like to share the story with you. It's kind of funny. It's very strange. On Friday, I had taken my grandson to Red Deer. He lives in Stecker. Well, I had to go to the washroom. And I said, oh, I'll go when we get to the wholesale club. Sign, bathroom out of order. Oh, okay. So I did my shopping, he did his shopping, and went out to the car, and I really didn't have to go to the bathroom that bad. <laughs> So I, on our way home, and I dropped him off in Stetler, and he lives three flights up, and I thought, no, I don't feel like climbing those three flights of stairs. I'll make it till I get home. Well, I just put this side a mirror, and oh, I had to go to the bathroom. So I started a little heavy foot, little heavy foot, red and blue behind me. <laughs> So oh, I roll down my window and I'm looking for my license and I'm sitting there. <laughs> he come up and he says, any idea why I stopped you? And I said, yeah, I think I was speeding. <laughs> yes, he said you were. He said, you know how fast you were going? I said, oh, about 120. Okay. Uh, he <laughs> said, yeah, uh, about 130. I said, really? I said, well, you know, I really got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> That's why I was speeding. <laughs> He said, you know, every third person I stop tells me the same story. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, well, and I'm humming. I said, well, I'm in a hurry. I can't find my, oh, there's my license, and I got my registration. And he said, you know, Mrs. Turka, he said, you were very honest with me. And he said, occasionally we will give locals a break. He said, and I believe you got to go to that <laughs> He said, so continue on, but a little bit slower, okay? He said, and I hope you make it home. <laughs> and I know God was with me. Or I was facing about a 
$200 ticket that I really can't afford right now. So I know the Lord was with me. Did you just don't have to go to the bathroom when you got home? <laughs> I made it home and in that bathroom I went. <laughs> like I said, it's kind of funny, but I know the Lord had to been with me. Amen. 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 Anybody else? Don't be left out. Exciting to hear what the Lord's doing in every little thing. Yeah. Well, I was grumbling away a little bit earlier in the week. Said, oh, I gotta do this and I gotta do that. And I done this and I done that. And all I do is do. A <laughs> <laughs> little voice said, look what I've done for you. Amen. And I just, it just brought me to tears. Yes, I know. For you are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs of victory. The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. Do not be like a senseless horse or mule that needs a bit and bridle to keep it under control. Many sorrows come to the wicked, but unfailing love surrounds those who trust the Lord. So rejoice in the Lord and be glad, all you who obey him. Shout for joy, all of you whose hearts are pure. Amen. Shout for joy. Come bless the Lord. Come bless the Lord. All his servants of the Lord. All his servants of the Lord. Who stand by night. Who stand by night. In the house of the Lord. In the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands. In the holy place, and bless the Lord, and bless the Lord, come bless the Lord, come bless the Lord, all the servants of the Lord, who stand by night, in the house of the Lord, lift up your hands, in the holy place, and bless the Lord. Lord, 
and he just wanted to be in the presence of God. He talked to Adam, and I imagine that took some courage to say, Adam, what was it like for you to talk to God in the, in the Garden of Eden before the fall? And it, it must have been something for God to come down and walk in the cool of the evening and talk, tell him how he hung the stars in the sky, how he named the planets, allowed um, Adam to, to name the animals, how he formed Adam with his, his hands in the dust. It must have been really amazing. I can't even imagine. And so uh, Enoch really wanted to, to be close to God, and he questioned, questioned Adam, and he, he, his desire was just to be as close as he possibly could be to, to God. And I think that's our desire, too. Come as close as we can to God. Let him minister to us as we talk to him. Uh, the province of the world is worth for about $40 trillion. That means the cars, the airplanes, the jewels, the, the diamonds, the, the everything but real estate. And God says, we're worth more than that. Peace. That's really something. Anyone who has low self-esteem, just think about that. God says we're worth more than everything that the, this earth has to offer us. So as you're going on your journey, you're starting out with good self-esteem. Um, another time that came to my mind this week was when Jesus was teaching the multitudes. And he taught all day long and he was tired. And he said to the, the disciples, go get the boat. And they got in the boat. And Jesus did too. And they were going across the Sea of Galilee. And it was a, a bad storm came up. It was calm, I guess, when they took off. But a bad storm came up, and Jesus was tired, he was sleeping. And after a period of time of struggling, the disciples woke him up and said, there's a bad storm out here. And so Jesus calmed the storm. And then they got to the other side. Jesus got out of the boat, and there was a cemetery there, and a man running in the cemetery that was demon-possessed and cutting himself and screaming. And uh, God went to our Jesus went to him and set him free. And I think, you know, Jesus will come in the midst of our storms, no matter where our storms is, no matter how tired or how, how long it is for him to get there, he'll get there. And his timing isn't always, always our timing, but he'll get there. And so he comes in the midst of the storm. So when you're praying, remember, he'll get there, he'll be there, he's there all the time. But when his answer just might not, might not be like I want it yesterday. When you're when you're waiting on the Lord, make sure you uncover your spirit and be quiet before the Lord. It's, it, if you're going before the Lord and you've got the radio on and the TV's going and the kids are yelling and uh, you'll never never hear the voice of the Lord and it'll just frustrate you. So make sure it's a quiet time with just you and the Lord. Um, the difference between our God. And all other gods and idols is our God likes to speak to us. Isn't that exciting? That's right. He likes to speak right. to us. Amen. Say that one again. <laughs> the difference between our God and all other gods and idols is our God likes to talk to us. Hallelujah. He likes to speak to us. He likes to commune with us. He likes right. to fellowship with us. And um, to encourage you, our daughter in Hawaii uh, has been praying for some of her co-workers that are very, very difficult to reach because there are a lot of people that are psych nurses and, and that, and uh, they have it all in their head, how, they, how things are supposed to work. And she was praying for this husband and wife, and a week ago Sunday, the wife phoned her and said, Lori, where are you going to church? So Lori told her, and she went to church, and, and she gave her life to the Lord. Last Sunday, her husband was with her, and he gave his life to the Lord. That's answer to the to prayers to this journey to the heart of God, and and that's exciting. And I share that with you for for reasons that um, to encourage you. You're praying for something. You're praying for somebody. Just hang on. Just hang on. And and when you're fasting, don't fast something that's too hard for you to fast. Fast something that is easier for this time round, and and so that you can stick with it. And, and uh, but if you fall, pick yourself up, 
Don't go back to day one. Keep going. Okay? And, um, and, and during this time, also, the Lord had given me a word for the church here, and, it, and he just gave me one word, and it was build. And I was praying for the church at the time, so build. And then I saw bands that were so big and so strong, and he just bound us all together. He'll bind us together with love that, that those cords can't be broken. And that excites me because I, he's given me such a love for everybody in this church. I, I could just hug you. It's, it's, it, it is exciting. So I think that, that was, that's about all. Um, just, just spend time with the Lord is the big thing. And fast something. It can be your electronics, um, which is a hard fast for young people. Uh, it can be TV. TV, that's another thing, and that'll sure quiet in your house a lot. <laughs> we noticed that at our daughter's place because that was one of the things she fasted. And wow, her house was quiet. It wasn't hard to find a peaceful, quiet place. <laughs> so whatever you decide to fast, fast, but don't do it so hard that your mind is on that instead of on, the, on God. Keep your mind on God and, um, and the fast and start out your journey with him. And uh, and how many are planning to go on this journey? Okay. Then I'm going to ask you to come forward, and pastors, just going to pray a prayer that God will go with you on this journey, that he'll meet you on this journey, on every need that you have, and, and also meet you with maybe a new ministry, maybe a new, a new language, maybe a new, who knows, God knows. He has something special for you. I know that. So if you come forward and pastor. Ruth, your pages on the other side there. On the other side. The yeah, no. Okay. Sorry. Um, and, and just come forward and pastor's going to just pray and we'll set you off on your journey and I have some information for you to take for seven days. We're just going to do it for seven days. If we accomplish that and everybody wants to keep going, which happened in Hawaii, they didn't want to stop, and they went 21 days. But we'll go for seven days, see how it goes, and then take it from there, okay? So anyone who's going on a journey, come okay. forward. And we'll just pray. Uh, this is exciting. This is very exciting. This is a better average than they had in Hawaii. They had 700 out of 1,000. <laughs> Pastor, jump out of the center there and he'll just get her around you. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. All right, Lord, we just bless you and we praise you. We worship you. Thank Father, you. I thank you for the tremendous response okay. in the church thank here you. today. Everybody's desire and heart, faith, to move forward and see you do mighty and marvelous things in their lives, in them, to them, and through them. Father, today I ask for an outpouring of the presence of your Holy Spirit to increase their faith, to give them joy in the morning, and grace for the journey, and an outpouring of a mighty strength of love to rest upon them, to accomplish all that you desire in them and through them. Bless them, Lord, speak to them, and grant them more, an anointing of your presence and answers to their prayers. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Okay, another thing, make sure you journal. Write down what you're praying for so that you know what God has answered. And, and, and if he gives you a word, even if it's one word, write it down. Because somewhere along the way it might be confirming something else for somebody else too. Okay? Amen. You're going to hand that out now?
chapter 16. Uh, I really missed uh, Bible study this this Thursday. and uh, But this week, I'll be home every evening. I'm working 8 to 4 out of cameras this week. So I'll be home every evening so I'll be able to make it. Now. Some good times. Proverbs chapter 16, picking it up in verse 6. I'm again in the New Living, or not. The Amplified Translation this morning. And it's worded in a very interesting way. And he's speaking in verse 6 about purging iniquity out of the heart. And Solomon writing to the people that are going to read this, and particularly he's writing to his sons and all who follow after that will read this it says by mercy and love truth and fidelity iniquity is purged out of the heart mercy love and truth three things that are so important to God you want to work on things in your heart that aren't right? You want to work on getting rid of these things in your heart that aren't right? You focus on these three things. Mercy. That is what God pours out upon us continuously is His mercy. That is the reason we can stand before Him. Because He has mercy upon us. It is the reason why we can come continually before Him. Because of His mercy. And the reason that he gives us such great mercy is because of his deep love for us. There is no love like the love of God. When he touches us with his presence, with his love, there is something that melts inside of us. There is something that covers us with a tremendous peace because he has this great love for us. And he wants us to show his great love to others. He doesn't want us to be judgmental and harsh. He doesn't want us to be condemning. But he wants us to show this great love that he has shown to us. And he shows us this great mercy he has for us because this great love for us. But love and mercy are never without truth. The Bible says when Jesus came, he came in truth and grace. Those two things always go together. Some people like all the love and all the grace and all the mercy, but no truth. Because truth that pierces our soul and our spirits and our hearts and speaks to the things that are in our lives that shouldn't be there. <coughs> and some people don't want to hear that. They don't want to address it. They don't want to have God touch that part of our lives. But God says it always comes together. Truth, mercy, grace, and love. They can always come together. So when God comes to speak to us and teach us and show us his great mercy and his great love, he also addresses his perspective of truth to us. So that we can walk in the direction that he wants us to go. So that we can be all that he wants us to be. So that we can change the things in our lives that need changing. He addresses us from the perspective of his truth. Not the truth that the world gives that is ever changing with the complex nature of people and the changing of times. God's truth is always the same and never changes. And it never needs a qualifier. It is always yes and amen and straight as an arrow. Never crooked, never changing. 
How is iniquity purged? Solomon writes to his sons from your hearts. By mercy, by love, and by truth. But he doesn't stop there in addressing this issue of iniquity being purged from the heart when he is talking to his sons. He says there's another two things that you need to work on. The reverent, worshipful fear of the Lord. By this, men depart from and avoid evil. You see, if you have this reverence for God and you worship him, you're going to avoid and leave behind evil. If you have this fear of God that you realize he is the God of retribution, that he is the God that everyone answers to, that he is the God that tears down and he builds up, he is almighty. And you have that fear of God and that reverence of God. You're going to seek to avoid evil. You're going to seek to depart from it and not be in its midst because you realize the consequences of that. I was kind of... We had a day at work this week on Friday what they call a maintenance day. And so the, all the three uh, groups of people that are being trained uh, were there. And two of us trainers were there. And the head trainer that was heading it up as we went through, you know, showing the guys how to pump the tracks up and do all this stuff on this equipment. And I could see the direction it was going as we were getting to about the third piece of equipment with all these guys. And so I saw this one set of tracks on a D6 that needed to be tightened in. So as they were going along, I said to the fellow who was leading the training, I said, you, you just carry on with all the guys and I'll go get the tools we need to do this job. And sure enough, as I come back, I could hear their foul-mouthed uh, sexual comments in the background and I chose to start a piece of equipment up and walk around and do my thing and disappear. <coughs> you see, that's not the place we belong in this kind of talk, in this kind of environment. And so I chose to do something deliberately to take myself out of that environment of discussion. Now, if I was in charge, it would have been a total different story. I would have made sure that this was not appropriate language in my presence. But since I wasn't, I chose to remove myself. You see, we have a choice that we can make, and it doesn't matter if we're in the work environment, it doesn't matter where we are, where we can depart and leave that environment and not participate with it. And the Bible says that's what we need to do as children of God. If we fear the Lord, we avoid these things. They're repulsive to us. And we walk away from them. Solomon goes on to write to his sons and says, When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies be at peace with him. <coughs> he has a purpose and a plan to protect us, to deliver us. When he sees that we are striving to be what he wants us to be and to do what he wants us to do. It pleases him. And when our ways please him, he makes even our enemies to be at peace with him. To continue and finish that story, so they moved on and they realized I wasn't moving with them. And they were shortchanged from my understanding and giving them the teaching that they wanted and they liked my presence with them. So when I kind of sauntered close, I noticed that they changed their way of speech. I never said a word. They knew exactly what was happening. They knew what I was doing. And they had a choice to make. They could either have my presence there and tone their speech down and control themselves. Or they could be by themselves. 
struggle on your own. <laughs> you see, there's, it, it's interesting, and I saw that. You see, because the enemy is the one that's subverting things. He is the one that's portraying through their minds. And I saw just a wonderful example of this. So they decided to curtail themselves. And I received the blessing of not having to participate with all that, and there was peace. And we carried on. Solomon goes on to write, better is a little with righteousness in it than great revenues with injustice. Better to be content with little and righteousness than have great income and revenue with injustice. You see, God doesn't like injustice. He hates it. And he loves righteousness. And he says, better to be content with a little bit and be in a righteous state than desire to have great revenues and have to function continually around justice. Many times, many times I've done that over the years. People have said, I just make a wholesale change. I said, I won't be part of this. As a walk out, well, it's going to cost you. Yes, it will. But I'm prepared to pay the price. I'm not prepared to, to sit in the middle of this and, and, uh, and put up with this. I won't do it. Not for love or money. You see, it's a price you have to pay, but the price is worth it. The price is worth it to take your self out of that situation and put yourself in a place where it's pleasing to God. Because He loves it. And He is our exceeding great reward. He reminded Abraham of that when he called him out of Haran. And he said, Abraham, I want you to leave all this behind and go in the direction that I want you to go. And then Abraham said, okay, Lord, I'll do this. And God said to him, I want you to know something, Abraham. I am your reward. Not only did he say that, I'm only quoting part, the first part is, he said, Abraham, I am your exceedingly great reward. Two adjectives that are of the utmost graciousness of God for us to grab a hold of. He's not just going to reward us. But he says, I will exceedingly greatly reward you. Wow, what a promise that we have from God when we go in the direction to please him and do his desire. A man's mind plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps and makes them sure. We plan it, and he's got nothing against that. <laughs> No matter who he likes that. You know, he likes us to think and to plan and to think about things and consider things and meditate on things. He doesn't mind that at all. But he says, the Lord will direct your steps and make them sure. So we can plan all our plans and if it's pleasing to the Lord, he's saying, he will direct these steps and he will ensure they are prosperous and have a good outcome. He goes on. The next five verses all directly deal with the king. Except for one, verse 11, which I preached on last Sunday, which speaks about God. Balances scales and weights. He says, divinely directed decisions are on the lips of the king, so his mouth should not transgress in judgment. Anyone who is in a position of authority has been put there by God. 
and they need to use good judgment. And it's important for them to use good judgment. It is an abomination, verse 12, to God and man for kings to commit wickedness. For a throne is established and made secure by righteousness. place and working to a place of leadership and you're in a place of kingship. He's writing to his sons. Don't do wickedly. Do righteously. Right and just lips are the delight of the king, verse 13, and he loves those who speak what is right. Everybody likes that. I remember between my first and second year of Bible school, the Lord said, I want you to Go from Caroline, Alberta, and I want you to go and work for your uncle in Manitoba drilling water wells for the summer. I said, oh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> and the Lord says, oh, but I want you to do that. So I get in my van, and I leave my family in Caroline, and I start heading to Manitoba, and I get, oh, between, just a little ways out of Calgary. And I pulled the van over and I said, Lord, I really don't like to do this. And so I said, I'm going to open my Bible and I need you to speak to me. More than what you've spoken to me, I need to read it because I really don't like this. I don't want to go back to Manitoba. I left there years ago. And uh, he did. It's amazing. You open it, fell open into Isaiah where it says, I am not sending you to your to a strange people to but a, your own people who speak your language. And I said, Oh yeah, they speak Mennonites really good. <laughs> so I started up the van and away I went. And I went to work for this uncle of mine who had established a big company and was very influential in Manitoba and they own now many companies in Saskatchewan also drilling companies, and, and I got there, and my uncle was known for being a hard man, and, uh, and, then a, and a heathen, and very persuasive, and I got there, and God granted me a tremendous favor, and with my uncle, and he liked it because I spoke truth, and I spoke right. And I found that amazing. Here he was a man who, who built and established a huge company and businesses. And, and I wouldn't consider him always ethical by any means. But yet I found favor because he wanted someone to work for him that spoke right and was ethical. And he liked that. Amazing. So he asked me all kinds of questions. I don't know why I'm telling you this now. It comes to my mind, I guess, about people. And so I just give him answers. And he said, what about me? What do you think about me? I said, oh, Lord, I need to answer wisely here. <laughs> and the word shrewd come up. And I said, uncle, I said, you're a shrewd man. That's what I think of you. He said, that's acceptable, Daniel. <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> Go do this and this and this today. I said, all right. <laughs> I was gone. And that was kind of an interesting thing, too. Everybody else had to answer to the foreman or other people, but I answered directly to him. So that was kind of God's favor, too. God gives us interesting situations in life. And he blesses us in that. He wants us to listen to him so he can use us in those situations for his glory. To give right answers. The wrath of a king is as messengers of death, but a wise man will pacify it. When you see someone mad and he's an authority, don't go irritate him and get your head cut off like John the Baptist. <laughs> I'm not saying what John the Baptist did was wrong, but he got his head cut off. He spoke the truth, irritated the king. 
When you see someone mad and angry, try and pacify it if you can. That will be wisdom to you. In the light of the king's countenance is light and favor as a cloud bringing the spring rain. Where the countenance of the king can bring you favor. That'd be good for you. Use wisdom in dealing with people. He goes on to write now in verse 16. It is much better to get skillful and godly wisdom than gold. And to get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. And you may ask, well, what's the difference between wisdom and understanding? Because the Bible differentiates between these two. And I just put it this way for my simple understanding for myself. Wisdom is giving the right answer and saying the right thing and doing the right thing. Understanding is knowing the reasons why. So when I go and do something and I say and I do the right thing, but understanding gives me the knowledge of why that's the right thing to do. You know, this for a basic example, you know, wisdom would say change your engine oil every 5,000 kilometers. Why? It'll make your engine last longer and, make, and you'll have a longer life out of it. And then it gets into it doesn't build up sludge, it doesn't inside your motor and clog ports up. And it, you know all the reasons why it, you should do that. But for the ordinary person, it's just wise to do that every 5,000 kilometers because the manufacturer recommends it. But understanding would be knowing why to do it that way. Same for in the church. Wisdom says love and have grace for one another. Understanding of why. Because this is God's plan. Because he loved us. Because he has made us a family. Because he wants us to do that for each other. Because it shows we are family and we are treating each other as he treats us. That's understanding. So wisdom, knowing what to do and say. Understanding, knowing why. I'm just getting going all the way past him. I heard the siren go. <laughs> And it's a good time to stop. We have a wonderful week to look forward to. Testimonies to look forward to hearing in the past of what God is, or in the future, to what God is doing and answering of prayers next week. And I'm excited. I'm really excited to see what God's going to do in our midst. And not only in our midst, but in Bashaw and all the surrounding area. Would you bow with me as we close in prayer? Lord, we just bless you and we praise you. And we are excited to see you move in us and through us and in our midst. And we look forward, Lord, to seeing all the things that you are going to do. I thank you, Lord, for each one here. I ask a blessing upon them this week. May they be touched by your presence. May they sense the glory of your pleasure resting upon them as they seek you and dedicate certain times to you and hearing your voice. Bless each one, Lord, abundantly, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Closing song for us.
While we're waiting for Lorraine, I'll tell you one answer to prayer that is a definite answer to prayer. Angus, that comes to church here, had back surgery, very delicate back surgery in Denmark, and uh, it was putting a, a cushioning in between all the discs in his, his back, and uh, he, he's just done remarkably well. He's back in, the, in Ajo, and he's just walking with one crutch. But they, they're amazed. He's done really well at 80 years of age.